Number six, precordial catch syndrome. Ever been chilling, doing absolutely nothing, and out of nowhere, bam, a tiny dagger of pain stabs you right in the chest. Usually on the left side, one very specific spot. You try to take a deep breath and oof, it feels like your rib cage is rebelling. Instantly your brain goes, is this it? Is this the big one? Should I text my goodbyes? And then poof, it disappears, like a drama queen who stormed in, made a scene, and walked out. Congrats, you've just experienced precordial catch syndrome, also known as that one chest pain that gives you an existential crisis. It's incredibly common, especially among teenagers and young adults, but it can hit anyone. Science thinks it might be a pinched nerve or a muscle spasm, but no one knows for sure. There's no test, no cure, no magic breathing technique. Just deal with it. Doctors will probably just shrug and say, you're fine. So yeah, your body sometimes decides to scare the life out of you for fun. Biology has jokes. Number five, globus sensation. Ever had that strange moment when it feels like something's stuck in your throat, a phantom pill or food that just won't gudge, but nothing's actually there? Welcome to the wonderfully weird world of globus sensation, where your throat plays mind games and your brain hits the panic button for no clear reason. Globus sensation is the name doctors give to that persistent lump in the throat feeling when no physical blockage exists. It's not dangerous, but it is incredibly frustrating. Imagine your nervous system acting like a car alarm that goes off when a leaf lands on the hood. That's your throat here, hypersensitive, overreactive, and utterly confusing. High anxiety levels can cause your throat muscles to tighten involuntarily. Think of it like your voice box tensing up in protest. That tension can trick your brain into thinking there's something physically stuck. Sometimes, stomach acid sneaks up and irritates your throat lining. Even if you don't feel classic heartburn, the nerves in your throat might still freak out. That stiff neck from staring at your phone posture? It could be sending weird signals to your brain and triggering this sensation. The hardest part is that there's no visible cause, which makes treatment a bit like throwing darts blindfolded. If it's stress, your doctor might suggest breathing techniques or cognitive therapy. If it's reflux, antacids could help. But often, it's more about managing symptoms than curing the problem outright. Your throat isn't broken, just a little dramatic. Like a smoke alarm reacting to burnt toast, it's picking up on signals that don't deserve an emergency response. And while it's annoying, the good news is that it's not dangerous and it often comes and goes on its own. This explanation is designed for educational and informative purposes. Always consult with a licensed medical professional if you're experiencing persistent throat symptoms. Number four, funny bone. You know that freaky moment when you accidentally smack your elbow just right and suddenly, bam, a bolt of electric chaos shoots straight down to your pinky and ring finger. It's not exactly pain, but it's not pleasant either. And everyone, for some reason, calls it the funny bone. It's not a bone, and it's definitely not funny. What you've actually just nailed is your ulnar nerve, which runs all the way from your neck down to your fingertips like a high-speed data cable for your arm. Most of the time, this nerve is safely buried under muscles and bones, like it's got VIP security. There's a cozy little spot called the cubital tunnel, and your poor ulnar nerve is just chilling there with barely any protection. It's like a live wire dangling off a wall, just begging to get bumped. The nerve gets squished right up against your elbow bone and instantly throws a tantrum. It sends a flood of jumbled, panicked signals to your brain. Your brain, trying to decode this electrical meltdown, responds with a weird combo of numbness, tingling, and ouch, what was that? Why would nature leave such a fragile, high-speed nerve in the exact spot you're most likely to whack against a table corner? Nobody knows. Not scientists, not doctors, not even evolution, apparently. Some call it a design flaw. Others call it payback for not using armrests. Can you fix it? There's no funny bone armor you can install. Your best strategy? Avoid hitting it. 
And when you inevitably hit it again, because you will, shake your arm around, say a few choice words, and remember, your body's just doing its weird little thing again. Number three, handedness. Have you ever stopped to wonder, why do most people use their right hand? Not half, not random. Nearly 90% of us lean to the right, and nobody really knows why. Sure, you'll see a few left-handers here and there, and a tiny handful of people who can use both hands equally. But this imbalance? It feels a little too weird to be chance. So what's behind it? Is it genetics? The brain? Habit? Or did nature just roll some weird cosmic dice when you were born? Scientists have been trying to figure this out for ages. They've looked at everything, brain structure, hormone levels, even how you curled up in the womb. Some think it links to how our brains process language, with one hemisphere taking charge, maybe dragging one hand along for the ride. But if that's the case, why didn't evolution just make us all equally good with both hands? Imagine riding, brushing teeth, and slicing fruit all at once like a circus act. Despite all the tech, all the data, and all the brain scans, we still don't have a solid answer. The question of handedness? Still unsolved. What we do know is, your brain picked a favorite hand before you even picked up your first toy. Long before you could sit or crawl, the choice was already made. And once one hand takes the lead, the other one kind of just tags along. Using it feels like dragging a dead weight you never asked for. Go ahead, try writing your name with your non-dominant hand. It's like trying to draw a self-portrait with a broken crayon and your eyes closed. What about you? Which hand do you use? Ever wonder, if you could pick again, would you choose the same one? Because trying to use your non-dominant hand for something familiar feels ridiculous, like doing surgery while wearing oven mitts. It doesn't take long to get frustrated. The writing looks like chicken scratch. Your hand won't cooperate. It's enough to make you want to scream. Scientists kind of feel the same way. They've got data, theories, and decades of research, but none of it fully explains why humans are so unevenly handed. Even identical twins, same DNA, same environment, sometimes end up with different dominant hands. One's a righty, the other's a lefty. That's when things really get weird. Another theory says hormones in the womb might influence handedness. Before you're even born, your body might already be picking a side. In fact, doctors can sometimes guess hand preference just by watching a fetus, which hand it sucks, which one it moves more often. Some scientists think it might just come down to a biological coin toss, a random result shaped by genes, hormones, and early movement patterns. Right hand or left, it doesn't matter. Your path is your own, and either hand can do amazing things with enough practice. To this day, the hand you use is still one of those beautiful human mysteries we haven't fully solved, and maybe that's what makes being human so fascinating. Number two, visual snow. Picture this, you wake up and suddenly the world around you looks like a TV that's lost signal. Tiny dots flicker endlessly across your field of vision. Your coffee cup, your friend's face, even the sunset, all buried under a soft, static haze. Even when you shut your eyes, the snow doesn't disappear. You turn on the lights, and it's still snowing. This isn't some rare condition affecting your eyes. Your eyesight? Totally normal. The problem is deeper. The disturbance is happening inside your brain. Researchers believe the part of your brain responsible for handling visual input is stuck with a kind of constant interference, as if the signal is always being scrambled. And it doesn't end there. You might experience strong after images from bright objects. Moving cars leave behind trailing shadows, like your brain is buffering in slow motion. Even standard lighting can feel overwhelming, like staring directly into a floodlight. Here's the frustrating part. Doctors can identify this condition, but they still don't know how to treat it. Brain scans reveal that the visual cortex behaves differently from others, but no one's found a way to reset it. There's no miracle cure, no pill that clears your view, no surgery that turns off the static. You just live with it, like a transparent layer over everything you see. 
Some people don't even realize it's unusual. They go through life thinking everyone sees this snowy overlay. And then, years later, they learn the truth. Imagine finding out at 25 that the world isn't supposed to shimmer like a light show, that your version of normal has been tinted by noise all along. So next time your Wi-Fi cuts out, remember, some people's brains are permanently stuck on that fuzzy channel. Number 1. Ear Rumbling Ever tried making thunder in your own head? Not the pounding type from a headache, but an actual deep rumbling sound that only you can hear and no one else can. Go ahead, close your eyes and try it. Shift your focus to the area behind your ears. Can you generate a low roar? Something like distant thunder, the wind in the trees, or maybe even a cat purring right up against your eardrum. If you can, congrats. You've just activated something unusual, your tensor tympani muscle. And yes, that makes you kind of a mutant. This tiny muscle lives in your middle ear. Its job? To act as an automatic volume adjuster. It tightens your eardrum to shield your hearing during loud sounds or even while chewing and yawning. But you? You can flex it at will. It's like ear wiggling, but stealth mode. Except, instead of movement, it creates a thunder-like hum inside your skull. Now, here's the weird part. Science understands the muscle itself just fine. What puzzles researchers is why certain people can control it consciously and others can't. What could be the use? Did early humans scare off predators with inner rumbles? Doubtful. Most people who find out they can do this think it's totally normal until they bring it up and get hit with blank stares. It's like saying you can smell colors. The muscle works perfectly. There's nothing wrong with it. But your brain somehow gave you manual access to something that's usually automatic. So what are you left with? An internal, on-demand white noise generator that doesn't do much of anything. You're not broken. But you're not exactly gifted either. Thanks for watching. I've got more content like this coming soon, so be sure to subscribe.